Creating captivating content. That's today's discussion. What does captivating content actually mean? So today's discussion is really around how to take material that are out there and, and thoughts that you may have for your business, and in this case, our insurance businesses, and creating something that's not only uh, interesting, but really is compelling, right? So what does that include? Well, we have blogs, we have social media, we have video, and it all comes into the fact, you know, for us, it's not just one thing that really gets with either the customer or consumer. It really comes down to a multitude of items kind of gelling together and conveying that message, right? So across multiple different mediums. And so the question always comes up is, so what and who cares, right? So, so many of us out there have seen this, so much material that's getting pumped out every day. And it comes down to, so what, who cares? What's in it for me? Why would I even spend five seconds watching this? And luckily, our material here on the Rewonder is so good that it really is captivating. So that's fortunate. But what makes it captivating is guests like we have today. So Liz Salierno is joining us. She is the owner of Nexus Content. We work with her directly. And she helps us take the thoughts that we have and turn them into that interesting, captivating content to convey the message that we would like to, to view out, out there. So Liz, good morning. How are you? I'm great. How are you? And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, I certainly appreciate you joining us because... Um, without you, we wouldn't be able to do 90% of what we do. So we sincerely appreciate the relationship, of course. <laughs> and so let's just start the easy way. Um, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm Chris Fluger. I'm the uh, Chief Development Officer here at We Insure. And Liz, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Okay. So um, Nexus Content is my company. It's a content marketing agency. We produce a lot of different types of content blogs, social media, videos, um, infographics, ebooks, web content, you know, whatever businesses need to achieve their goals. Um, so we've been um, working with you guys through um, our partnership with Chimera, your mm -hmm. ad agency. Um, they are a terrific agency. They know the value and the importance of good content for companies. So when they have a job uh, where the content demand is at a certain level um, and they want to, you know, knock it out of the park, they bring us in. So we've been um, working with you guys, I think for a couple of years now, producing your uh, consumer facing blog, the franchise facing blog, social media content, uh, as well as uh, press releases when new agencies um, are onboarded. And uh, also when you hit significant uh, milestones, go into a new state, uh, you know, anything like that. And, and, and that's kept us really busy because uh, you guys are hitting milestones left and right. So uh, we, we appreciate that. And, and if you could just keep doing that, we'd be really grateful because we love the work. So thank you. Well, we certainly are planning on keeping doing that. And again, I think we're in 18 states right now. That, that, was, a big, that was a big setup for me. So I appreciate that. Uh, we're in 18 states and we have uh, new people coming on every week in all those states. And again, we are very excited about the growth. I believe last year was a little bit more than 55% growth. And that really was exciting for the company, but uh, we have big plans. So we're planning to be a, you know, a nationwide organization very, very quickly. And we're continuing that growth, uh, that strategic growth efforts uh, on a daily basis. So you are very valuable to us because if we had to sit down and do all the material ourselves, we would never get it done, right? So it's just it's too quick. So we'll keep our pencils sharpened and we're ready to go whenever you need us. We will do it. So I will ask you a few more questions. So you know, how do we decide, you know, kind of what to write about? I mean, we have a lot of great value props, you know, and we've talked about this before, you know, we have unbelievable amount of carrier access. So a lot of people look at us and say, boy, I really need carrier access and insurance. So that's what I'm looking for. But the reality of it, the business model itself is so compelling. It's hard to get all those points out to folks. So how do we decide kind of what to write about and make it interesting? Well, you know, the approach we take is, you know, there's an approach you take for every business, you know, starting really generally, um, you know, it really always starts with um, the business, uh, the business's goals, their marketing goals, their business goals. Uh, you know, in, in, in your case, um, you know, we want to focus on uh, two primary areas, I would say, uh, creating that brand awareness, uh, creating content that is going to focus on your value props, um, elevate the brand, give the brand a voice so that people know what they can uh, come to expect. You want that voice to be consistent. You want it to be clear. You want it to have a point of view. You want it to be authoritative, confident, all of that. So we'll have brand awareness building types of posts. And then of course, informative posts about 
all the different insurance lines you carry, which is challenging because there are so many different uh, lines of insurance. And uh, so, you know, the, the approach we take um, is one we would take with, with any company is that you want to, you want to translate those goals into a content plan. And the tool for doing that is a content calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what you don't want to do ever is be in a position where you're saying every week, well, what do we write about? What should we, what can we write about this week? What can we write about this week? Now, sometimes things will come up and you'll be like, we really want to write about this, but you want to have a, a sound plan in place, a default plan. That way, you know, if something comes up fine, you can bump another piece and you have something ready to go. So we kind of, uh, we create calendars uh, quarterly for, I think all clients and, and uh, you know, you want to, we, we aim to be at least a month or two ahead in producing content. So right now this is uh, as this is recorded, we're at the, uh, uh, the uh, tail end of March and we're, we're about to turn in June. So uh, working ahead is key. Planning ahead is key. Content calendar is, is, is what you really need to do that. And uh, we do it quarterly, but we also step back and consider it uh, the entire year because uh as I said, you guys carry a lot of, uh, there are a lot of lines of insurance we want to talk about, but we probably don't want to talk about RV insurance as much as homeowners insurance, or home, we, we want to make sure we're talking about homeowners insurance more than RV insurance. So we want to make sure that that calendar is proportional and reflects the priorities uh, of, the, of the business in terms of the marketing, in terms of sales, in terms of all of that. So that's how we, we sort of decide. I talk to your marketing team regularly to see what's uh, what's in the broader plan? What uh, you know the health the healthcare rollout? You know how we how does that factor in? Where does that uh, how does that fa affect the other priorities? And we create a calendar every every three months, uh, but always with sort of a loose idea of what's coming down the pike. It's real crystal clear for three months, and we still have a sense of maybe you know we're going to talk about flood insurance during the rainy season and you know other things during the course of the year. Well, I, what I really appreciate about our relationship is the fact that, you know, you have an outside perspective, like you work with other firms, you get a fresh perspective on what we do. Um, you know, a lot of firms what they have is in-house and then they, they make the decisions based on the fact, well, you came up with this meeting, so we're just going to do this. And it seems very, very um, either disjointed or it feels like it's just, it wasn't planned well. And so in our case, I, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, you have that outside perspective while we keep that thread throughout the year. We have different fresh content all the time. So that's that to me is, is really what's valuable because we want our clients and our owners to know, you know, frankly, they can take that material and use it uh, on their own sites. Right. But it also has to be entertaining and educational at the same time. So it can't be just law. Right. So it's it's we've got such a tremendous uh, you know brand and marks with we that there's so many plays on words and so many things we can do. It, it almost boggles the mind. So uh, <laughs> I like I like the fact that we plan it out ahead of time and then keep it fresh with the consistency throughout the year. So that's fantastic. And again, you you mentioned that weighted appropriately. You know, while we do so many different lines of business, you know, a lot of people come to us primarily for homeowners, right? So that's where we start, and then they branch out into commercial. They branch out into a boat, or they branch out into multiple vehicles or umbrellas or whatever it might be. So. Right. And that's why you don't want to get, you know, you don't want to probably do a, a, a year long calendar, even if you could, because things change and then you're just redoing the work. So uh, or redoing the planning. So, you know, quarterly is good for, for most companies. And then you you just adjust as as things go, because things always change. You know, the pandemic changed everything, you know, new lines, new opportunities come up, business models change. So we keep it flexible that way. Well, the one thing we did notice, even with the pandemic, was the fact that, you know, everybody needs insurance, right? So it's one of those products that are always out there. And the pandemic actually increased people's awareness. And they said, okay, what kind of insurance do I have? What do I need? Am I driving my car as much as I used to working from home? And how does that change in the next few months as we come out of this, right? So that's, those are things that we always want to have a professional on staff to answer those questions and, and help us as individuals make those determinations. So again, the value of having that, uh, that we professional at your, at your call. So that's great. Well, let me ask you this. We talked a little bit about our agency owners and, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, there's, there's a high level component where we have a brand aspect of what we do, right? So we keep putting material out. We keep brand awareness out there and we keep going down those different lines, but agency owners, you know, how can they supplement or, or leverage what we currently have? Right. So in a franchise kind of situation, 
um, you know, you, you, uh, you, you in a way have a, a brand within a brand when you're a franchise owner, um, you're a sub brand of the big brand, but you, that doesn't, uh, just because the, you know, corporate is out there promoting the big brand doesn't, uh, get you off the hook for promoting your local brand. And that's so important because you're still going to be competing with other agencies in your area, maybe even other, we insure agencies in your region or something like that. And you want to position yourself. You want to differentiate yourself and really only you can do that. You know, that's not something corporate you know, can, can do for, you know, 200, you know, different franchises. So it's super, super important to, um, you know, to really find your niche. I think it's, I think it's increasingly difficult uh, for any business to be a generalist. It's certainly difficult in the content sphere. Uh, there's just so much competition out there that you are much better off speaking very clearly and directly and specifically to a narrower segment of your market. So, you know, whether whether you want to be, uh, you know, the go to resource for business insurance for small to medium sized medical practices uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, luxury lines, second homes and yachts and things like that. You know, you have a real opportunity to stand out because there's a lot of people who are claiming the middle ground and, you know, we, we sell everything. So um, super, super important to use your content, you know, consider consider what what corporate does is sort of a jumping off point. Uh, and then where can you take that, you know, see how far you can take that for yourself to really different differentiate yourself uh, and also communicate locally. You know, I mean, if you're if you're gosh, insurance is, you know, just about one of the most local businesses there there is. Right. I mean, it's you know, it's in your town. It's I think like with realtors or restaurants. Um, people want to feel, feel more safe, more secure. There's more trust with um, doing business with the business that's very uh, connected locally. So talk about that. You know, you're 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 living in the community. Uh, you know, are you doing some community uh, involvement? Are you doing some charity work? I mean, even things like, um, you know, not that most of your posts should be like this. But there's nothing wrong with supplementing your post to say, here's 10 great pizza places in the neighborhood, you know, and, and my our favorite type of pie at each one of them or something. I mean, that's really nice. It's very generous content. You know, don't always be out there shilling and selling, you know, be generous. Content, like anything else, is relationship building. And it doesn't really change just because it's a video somewhere or words on your blog. You still want to be of service, come with an attitude of being helpful, of, of, of answering questions. In the case of, uh, you know, we'll try to answer common questions on the, on, the, on the corporate blog, certainly. You know, what does bundling do for, you know, things like that. But, but speak to, you know, maybe you're, you're an agent in a, in a coastal area. So you, sure, you're gonna really be very helpful uh, to, to your, your local audience by sharing your expertise about um, you know insuring homes on the water, say, uh, or boats or whatever. So you really want to establish your local, you know, your local presence, your local brand, and and really show that you've uh, that that you're part of the community. That so that when that person calls you, or they walk into your your office, uh, whenever we start doing that again, I guess um, you know they feel like they know you already, and that's a tremendous advantage, right? Just like any time you've gone to a party and somebody said, oh, hey, this is my friend, Bob. He sells tires. And they're like, oh, hey, Bob, you know, my tires are going, you know, you, you, you're already, that's what you want. You want to feel like, uh, you want your customer to feel like they know you before you walk in the door, before you answer the phone. And your content can do that for you if you put the effort into it and, and, and personalize it. And don't talk about yourself too much. <laughs> Make sure you keep it focused on their needs. That, that was a lot of information in one, in one statement. So I'm going to unpack some of that. I will okay. tell you uh, one thing I see is mis the big mistakes I see people making, right? So one mistake I see them making is lack of consistency. They're like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I do it for three solid weeks, right? And then all of a sudden it comes, well, I forgot to do it last week. So I'm going to do it two weeks from now. And then it becomes less and less of a thing. And then you fall off the map. Um, right. This is this is a marketing sin that I see people do all the time, whether it's marketing yourself, you know, from an insurance perspective, a real estate perspective. A lot of people do this and they say, well, I'm going to try this for a little while and see if it works. Well, a little while should be three years, not I'm going to do it for three weeks and see how it works out. So the consistency component, I think, is very key. The other thing you said, which was very, very valuable, is I do everything. 
well, it's hard for me to buy everything. Like as a consumer, I'm like, I don't know if I have everything, right? So what do I call you for? Well, you may want to slice that content, you know, and those those different uh, posts or different material into very small chunks and say, listen, I'm an expert on marine boats, uh, anything around the water and, you know, luxury homes, you know, right. anything you can help you with. And that way those people know to come. Now, can you help anybody? Of course. But your message can't be, I'm going to sell you everything. Right. So, people are never shopping for everything all at once. Mm -hmm. In a given moment, they're looking for one thing. So, you know, the more specific you get, the more your content is likely to tap into the minds of people with greater intent to purchase. So, you know, the higher, you know, the kind of more general it is, there's a, there's a place for that somewhat, you know, in that people might just have questions about, oh, I, you know, I just bought a new house. What are the things I should be thinking about? Insurance is one of those many things. That's a chance to get on their radar before they're shopping even for insurance. And you're giving them helpful information about lots of things, not just insurance. That's what we call top of funnel content. You know, they're not really close to buying, but at least you're getting them in your funnel, right? And then, but the closer, if you really want to be kind of converting, uh, the, the, it's going to be really specific. Like, you know, who who's more like, who's ready, who's more ready to buy a policy? Like somebody who's going to click on what is homeowner's insurance or how do I get the best deal for my second, for, for insurance for my second home, you know, that's on the coast. You know, you know, you know who's really looking for something if they're clicking on that. So you're going to have a better chance probably of converting from your content if you make it very specific. If you talk to almost have one person in your mind, a very specific person and speak to them. And when you do that, you'll be speaking to a lot of people like them, but think of it as one person. Wow. That's, that's very, very valuable. And I, I can't tell you how often you see that mistake the other way, right? So this, this is, is, is very, I'm sure everyone out there is listening, taking notes. So the, the last thing I had for us on this is for our, we insure agents out there, you know, any specific tips, you know, cause we've talked about this a lot, final tips for our, we insure agents, you know what we put out so much material and, and again, intentionally because we want them to sift through and decide what they want to use on their sites, what they want to leverage for themselves. But, but what is one example of something they can use that we put out? Well, I mean, I think, you know, you're already getting this content and you can, absolutely supplement. It's a great, it, it's probably easier than just starting from scratch. I think adding fresh stuff that you produce is great, but maybe before you do that, um, if there's a, if there's a blog post that's coming down the pike and it's about flood insurance, mm -hmm. um, you know, make a short video. It could be you, it could be one of your agents, you know, it could be whoever's comfortable doing that doesn't have to be, and it probably shouldn't be a six or seven minute video, two minutes. Talk about, you know, uh, you know, say, hey, you know, uh, this is a recent experience I had helping somebody uh, secure some flood insurance and how it really saved their butt when something happened. And, you know, and we do we write these this many policies a year and we really we can help you, you know, it just just put a face to it. Just put just speak to them. You know, you, you don't the information's in the blog. So you don't really have to go through, you know, the flood map and, the, you know, all of these things. Um, you know, you can just say, hey, check out. We've written we've produced a really uh, informative blog for you to get some basic information. But I want to let you know how this really affects local you know, people in your community. And here's a story, no names, but, you know, of somebody, uh, you know, in this area and, and we help them just something like that. Then you could easily write off a, you know, so you can you can put that on YouTube. You could take a little clip and put that out on social media. I think doing, you know, the 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 combining video with blog content is really. Um, I would say I hate the word synergy because it sounds so business speak, but there really is something that uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. If if you if you kind of puts put, take one piece of core content of pillar content and then you spin off and you do a social post and you do a video maybe you've got somebody who can uh work a, a canva template so you can do a little graphic a little and put it on instagram you know really the sky's the you can add the information to your newsletter you could you know there's so many things you can do so just use what what we're providing as a starting point and personalize it for your agency personalize it and i would say you know the other if there's one thing to go back to what you said about, uh, you know, they start trying to do something and then, you know, they, they, they do it for three weeks and stop. Mm -hmm. Work ahead, you know, decide what you can do and, and, um, and, you know, 
be incremental. Marketing is incremental. You know, it, you know, decide what's reasonable, what works with your schedule, your resources, and put out a video every two weeks if that's what you can manage. You know, or one a month. You know, and build from there. Pick whatever you're going to do that you can do consistently and do that and work ahead. That I cannot tell you how important that is. I could not run my business if I did not work ahead or I'd have to charge people so much. I would not have a business anyway, you know, because it is a lot more people say like how much a word. My next question is, when do you need it by, you know, and, and it's, it's for a lot of reasons, you know, you, you, things come up, you know, people, you know, have the nerve to like take vacation and have babies and stuff. And, you know, the content's got to get done one way or another. So if you're not working ahead, every little thing is going to throw you off course. So with that quarterly calendar, if you know what's coming down the pike, you can plan ahead. Uh, you can create your own content to supplement. Work ahead. Bank some content ahead so that whatever you're working on, you don't need for, you know, a month or two. And so it doesn't matter if you, you know, take a vacation or, you know, Aunt Joan comes to visit. So work ahead, personalize your content. Remember, it's a relationship. You know, even if you're you're broadcasting to a lot of people, think of it as talking to one customer at a time. And I think you'll have a lot better result. That's that's fantastic. And again, lot a lot of good advice in here. And I would say, you know, the things I take away from this is not only the consistency, but also setting aside the time to plan ahead to do it. I think that's the toughest part. We're all working. We're all, you know, doing our business. And instead of taking the time to step back and work on the business, we're always in the business constantly. So taking the time to sit there and say, okay, this is very important. And, and who to send it to, right? So it's just send it to your past clients, send it to existing clients, but also send it to your professional networks. And, you know, there's a lot of people that rely on the insurance industry, whether it's real estate agents uh, or mortgage brokers. And those people need to know that, you know, you have the ability to put this stuff together. And even if you have great relationships, it's always good to hear from you consistently. So they know you're the resource for them. So again, uh, you know, Liz, I can't tell you, this has been fantastic and I appreciate you joining us today. And uh, that's been great. You have a wonderful week. You too. Thank you so much. I hope it was helpful. And um, thank you so much for, um, you know, the relationship, uh, you know, between um, We Insure and Chimera and Nexus Content. We really uh, appreciate it. You guys are wonderful to work with. And uh, we're just having a great time and look forward to what's to come, which will be a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your, your input as well. And again, joining me today on We Wonder. Thanks a lot.